Today, we will learn about Excel for genealogy. I'm your trainer, Lori Coffey. Even though I don't like data entry, I created a list of 2,400 names that I entered by hand from this pamphlet. They were last names for four generations of descendants of each of the Mayflower Pilgrims. I was scheduled to give a live presentation about the presentations at a PGS meeting, but COVID got in the way. My plan was to let the audience look up their family names on the list to see which pilgrim they might match. After all that data entry, we presented virtually, so it wasn't used. Nevertheless, it's a good example of filtering in Excel, which we saw demonstrated earlier. Now I'll show you how to apply it. Once you create your database with headers in row one, click in the database, then on the Home tab, Editing section, click the Sort and Filter button, then Filter. Instantly, see what happens? Little funnels show up in the headers. These are very powerful filtering tools. Let's see filtering in action. I'm looking for the name Askins. Instead of going through the whole list in the search box, come on, there we go, there we go. I type in ask and hit enter. Boom, instantly, all those possible pilgrim ancestors. When I'm done, I click the funnel again to clear the filter. So easy because you set the database up right. And if you don't want the filters on, just click the button again. It's a toggle switch. See? The filter funnels are gone. What other options are inside those filter funnels? Sort A to Z to sort names and places starting at the beginning of the list. The opposite is good for numbers like dates and amounts. See the tiny arrow which shows which column is sorted? That tells you. It used to be a different color, but people couldn't see it. So they added the tiny little arrow, which people can't see. <laughs> if you want a quick sort without turning on filter, this is the key to making sort work right from the home tab. Never select the entire column before sorting because you don't want the last name and the first name separate from each other. Fortunately, Excel will warn you if you try. Accept the suggestion to expand the selection. You generally don't want to sort that one from the others. What if you want to sort by two columns, like last name and then first name? We have another button called Custom Sort. It gives you the option to sort by any and all of the columns and in any order you choose. First, it selects the entire database, then the sort window opens. At the top, you can add a level like first names. Let's try it. The entire database is selected and the sort window has opened. I change the sort to by last, then add a level and select first, right from the list. I could change the sort order, but I click OK. It's now sorted by last, then first. You can also sort by color, but first you have to add color. <laughs> The easiest way is to click the cells to color. In the font section, hit the fill paint bucket arrow. Then select a color. The hardest thing is to figure out which color. Choices include theme colors, standard colors, no fill. It's a good way to turn off color. And more colors with two more tabs to make it any color you want. Here's an important best practice. When you select a color, be consistent and it's used to ensure that the filter by color works properly. The last color you used will appear in the paint bucket until you change it. So you can use it over and over until you choose a different color. If you've been using multiple colors, Format Painter is a good way to match the right color. First, I select the cell with the color and formatting I want. I click the Format Painter button. That holds the new format in the cursor. Whatever cell I click will have the new color and format, even if I click and drag over multiple cells. Format Painter is a good way to remove color too. First, I select the cell with all the formatting we want except for the color. I click the Format Painter button that holds the new color-free format in the cursor, then click the cell to decolor. Here's another option with Format Painter. To turn it on indefinitely, instead of clicking it once, double click on it. 
which keeps it turned on while you move around to paint various cells. To turn them off, click the button again. Here's a spreadsheet example I found online that uses a different color for each generation. Great idea. But here's an issue you should be aware of. These cells are merged to create one cell. That's fine if you don't plan to sort or filter. But if you want to use those powerful tools, don't merge cells. Instead, create duplicate information in the column, one for each name. To merge multiple cells, use the Merge and Center button. But know that any data must only be in the first cell. The merge process will wipe out any data that's in any other cell being merged. I click on the first cell to merge. Then I click and drag to include all the cells that I want merged. I click the Merge and Center button. After the merge, I align as needed. Center, there we go. To unmerge, click in the merge cells, then select the arrow and unmerge cells. Then use the autofill handle to duplicate the content. Remember autofill? All right, let's see why you would want to use merge cells to find gaps in your research. This pedigree chart shows up to third great grandparents on my paternal side. Looks complete, right? When I move to my grandfather, I see a couple of gaps. Still no big deal, right? What if you could see all your grades up to your fifth great grandparents in one sheet to see all the gaps? These are the people you share the most DNA with and could answer lots of questions about your origins. If you have them in your tree, the yellow screams, look for me first. <laughs> now you see why you might have DNA surprises. This chart is not for sorting or filtering, just for seeing your progress as you find and fill in all 64 ancestors up to your fifth great grandparents. Still working on it. Here is a timeline example I found online that uses color to easily identify different life events. Good idea and no issues. <laughs> Some people out there know what they're doing. Here's a beautiful timeline that is best created in Excel for its real estate size and grid, so you can easily line up objects. The tools to create it include, under the Insert tab, pictures, text box, and shapes, specifically lines. About 10 hours later, I can tell you, I didn't do this, but I know how much time it would take because I've done things similar. <laughs> Okay, so about 10 hours later, when you're done adding all the images, text boxes, and lines, to remove the grid lines under the View tab, uncheck Grid Lines. Then to add the color to the background, select all the cells by clicking in one cell, then hit Control A for all, then under Home, use the Fill bucket to choose your background color. It will not affect the objects on top. When creating a timeline, you may want a quick way to insert dates. In a cell, hit control semicolon to instantly enter today's date. I love that. Remember the autofill handle at the bottom right? Click and drag it on a date and watch it increase. Click the dates tool to change what increases, like the years. When you decide to join a lineage society, I recommend using Excel. I found that requesting and collecting vital records in the application was very confusing. I needed a better place to work. Excel to the rescue! Color coding was useful when tracking requests for all the proof documents like birth certificate. For example, I used yellow on the dates I had sent away for them. When I received them, I would remove the yellow and make the text pale gray so I wouldn't keep looking at them. It worked. I got in. My first lineage society, now I'm in seven, but they are easier to do since I have a process starting with a useful database. We can now add or remove color as needed, if you remember to do it. For example, to highlight the youngest passengers and the oldest passengers. But is there a way for Excel to automatically add color if the cell content meets certain criteria? Well, you know the answer is yes if I'm asking, right? <laughs> Of course, conditional formatting. I want the cell to turn red if they died in 1620. I select the column, then conditional formatting. I select highlight cell rules, 
then equal to. When I enter 1620, oops, equal to, when I, as soon as I hit 1620, see, it automatically shows up. If I want 1621, I just add another condition the same way, and it instantly is highlighted on the list too. There you go. You can use it up to three. You, you can have three conditionals uh, formatting. But if you see any of the built-in ones, some of them can do double duty, like between, between this date and this date. 